Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Taskmaster Norway or Kongen Baffler, which is probably pronounced very wrong, uh, but it basically means the King Commands and is their version of like Simon Says. So I think that's a very cool name straight off the bat. I think it's great. We're going to be talking about uh, how good of a remake of it is, how good of a Taskmaster is it. So it's been quite positively received I would say for most people that I've seen watch it. Uh, yes let's just get straight into the video. So Taskmaster Norway started in 2019 and there is currently four series of it. I have only seen series one so this is purely a review of series one so if anything I say in this video changes in future series then that is why I've only seen the first series. It seems to be very popular in Norway. It won the best entertainment program in the Golden Route in 2020 so that's very good. Yeah so in this video I'm going to go through every aspect of Taskmaster and compare it to the original. So we've got the Taskmaster, the Taskmaster Assistant, the Contestants and then the Tasks. So yeah there are four categories and yeah let's get straight into it. So first off Taskmaster. So the Taskmaster is Atal Antonsen. He has got a very different demeanour to Greg. Um, he is less authoritarian, I would say less strict, but he's definitely got the right look for the Taskmaster, he looks quite stern and very kind of similar to Greg in certain ways. I do like the way he runs the show. Uh, he's not as impulsive as Greg. Um, most of the time, I think there's some moments where he does just go with that gut feeling. A lot of the time, his scoring does seem quite methodical um, and like well thought out. Obviously, not all the time because his scoring definitely is quite questionable at some time. So he's definitely similar to Greg in that way. One thing I love is that I I get the sense that he's like genuinely enjoying himself and having a good time, like chatting to the contestants and watching their attempts and just having a great time with like friends and fellow comedians. I think it's a really great kind of feel we get from him. Uh, he also does bring out like the strictness and the authority a lot of times which is very entertaining especially because it's not like all the time so you know he's kind of serious when he does. So I say he's not that strict but he definitely isn't like pushed around or swayed that like Greg can be swayed. Yeah depending just who it is. Uh, Greg you know it can be a bit biased or yeah not I don't know when they say biased but he definitely can be influenced uh, to giving some people more points than they perhaps deserve. But one thing I will say about him is that he, sometimes he doesn't follow the rules of the task that well. Like there are some people who should have been like disqualified because they like broke a rule um, that then weren't disqualified and he's not as picky on certain things. Like they have like tasks where you're not allowed to touch the red green and there are moments when it's like that's questionable, like they could be on it. Um, whereas in the UK one, they zoom in and make sure that they're definitely not uh, treading on like they did with Joe Wilkinson. I would say he's definitely like in the middle of Greg Davis and then Jeremy Wells who's the host of the New Zealand one. I think he's kind of in the middle of them like not as strict but seems to be a bit more involved with the scoring. He definitely talks through like the contestants approaches which is I really like to see. But yeah I like that he's yeah interact with them a lot a lot more than Jeremy does but yeah not as strict as Greg. That's kind of where I would place him. I very much enjoy him. Um, I saw some complaints that there he was not the best host. Um, I definitely think he's not at Greg's level, but he's definitely not bad at all. Yeah, I think he's quite entertaining. So the Taskmaster's assistant is Oli Wormskong. So he, I think for me, and I don't mean this in a bad way, it's probably the weakest translation from the UK to the to the Norwegian one. Um, just for the main part that he doesn't seem as involved is in the tasks as Alex is. So he's obviously there when the contestants do the tasks, but he isn't kind of like involved as much um whereas Alex is kind of like sometimes he just seems to disappear in the tasks so like I know he's there we don't have like zoom ins on what like his expression of what, what they're doing the task is like we don't have him in the background as much the contestants don't really communicate with him that much while they're doing the tasks they don't ask him to do things for them or or anything like that and when they do it's just like a simple no there's no kind of like back and forth he isn't subjected to kind of like the torture that Alex is which if he doesn't want to do that then that's fair enough there have been moments one of the contestants uh threw him in a lake so he definitely it's definitely think I can something I can see being improved um, and him definitely getting a bit more involved. 
Um, he definitely just seems more of an admin guy and presenter rather than the subservient assistant, which if they're going with a different character, then that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I'm just not really getting a sense of what he's supposed to be doing. Um, whereas Alex, it's quite clear that he is this taskmaster's servant who will go and do things and will do things for the contestants as well and do whatever they say to an extent and also kind of make sure they're following all the rules. I definitely, yeah, he just feels less involved. However, like I said, it does get better throughout the series. Like I said, he did let some of the Roman leg and he has in a couple things, but yeah, there's definitely potential for him to grow as a character and yeah, get involved a bit more with the contestants and their approaches to tasks. But yeah, I do like that he isn't trying to copy Alex directly. He is different from him. They do look kind of similar, but he is different in the way that they act. He definitely seems less weak. I don't mean that in a bad way to Alex, but he do, yeah, he isn't bossed around. He, he he isn't like that at all. He just seems to be kind of like amused a lot of the time by what the contestants are doing and refuses to help them a lot of the time, which yeah, I think it's good. Um, I would just like to see him more involved because I definitely think he has potential to be really, really good and it's a shame that he wasn't as involved. So the contestants, the contestants in the order that they're seating are Vegard, Maria, Bard, uh, Suri and Kai. They are all great contestants. I like every single one of them. They have great chemistry between them all and like great, yeah, just like energy in the studio. Um, and also when they're tasked, they all tend to have distinctly different approaches most of the time. They all have, you know, different characteristics and they all kind of get on together, which I think is great. Uh, they all also have great chemistry with the taskmaster himself and the taskmaster assistant, although less so with the assistant. And also Vegard and Bod are, uh, brothers so they have that sibling rivalry going on which i think is a great addition um i wish we kind of have that kind of we haven't really had any family relations in taskmaster before so i think that's a great addition and it's also great because sometimes they have similar solutions to tasks it's quite interesting to see how like their minds work uh it's like sometimes they have the exact same approach and sometimes it's just like worlds apart so i think that's really interesting to watch uh, Vegard also has a great relationship with Maria. Uh, they sit next to each other in the studio. Yeah, they just have a yeah, great relationship between them. Maria's quite young. Like, she's got that youthful energy about her um, and it's not like shut down like it is in Taskmaster UK. Like Greg, if you're young, <laughs> like you're not gonna get away with certain things. Yeah, everyone kind of embraces it and kind of attributes her some of her approach to tasks as being like young and naive almost. Yeah, everybody's a bit crazy as well. Uh, Bard and Vagard are, yeah, just a bit insane. Uh, Siri and Kai have a great relationship as well. There was one moment where uh, Siri says that she reckons Kai would be able to would do best at task because he's like psychotic. And then he says basically the same thing about her and they both do terribly in the task. They sit next to each other as well. They've got a great relationship going on as well. Every contestant I would say has had a good amount of standout moments and parts where you know they seem to be like oh they're the best contestant you know and they all seem to embrace the show completely. All of its craziness they like entirely embrace. They've all got that right level of competitiveness um, but also some tasks where they just seem like they just want to have fun. Uh, Maria, I would say, is the strongest example of that. There's one task where they have to move birthday cakes, like, from one table to another, and there's a rope, and obviously they have to, like, decide whether they want to build something to pass it across or to throw it. And she spends half the time just eating it because she wanted to. Yeah, she just wanted to have fun. She likes eating nice food, so she just decided to eat it and not do great on the task, even though she did actually score quite well. Yeah, they're, they've got that good mix of competitiveness, having fun and just being friendly with everybody else. You know, there's no kind of nastiness. Um, there isn't any that much in the UK one either. There's just, there's just none of that. There's all seem to be having fun and wanting to do well. It's just great to watch. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. I really enjoyed watching every contestant here. Bard is a bit of a genius. I think he probably one of my favourite contestants. Um, well, he, I think he's my favourite contestant in this series but all of them have had great, great moments. But yeah, he's just very entertaining and has some really, really ingenious solutions to tasks. I would say all of them have surprised me in some parts about how kind of good their solution is. So the tasks, arguably one of the most important aspects of the show, they do contain a mix of original tasks and also tasks that are carried over from the UK version. Um, if it was up to me, I would probably just have it all be original tasks. I think Taskmaster New Zealand is a great example of why having all original tasks works very well. Some examples of the copy tasks, we've got the don't blink task, 
the fell the ducks task, collecting tears. Not every task is copied over, which is good. I would say for the most part, I didn't mind the tasks being copied. There was only one episode where it felt a bit like, oh, come on, like every task was one from the UK one, which yeah, I didn't like that one as every task in an episode, like one or two per episode would be all right. It is cool to see more people doing some of the tasks, like the tasks they copied over were good, but yeah, I, I would prefer all original. One task that they did copy over, the don't blink task, was incredible. It was just insane. Get yeah, spoilers if you don't wanna know, but three people beat Rod's attempt by quite a lot to the point where I'm skeptical of the timings uh, because the world record is around like 30 minutes. One guy did it for like two hours. Yeah, I'm a bit skeptical about the timings there, but nonetheless, they definitely, I would say they all beat uh, Rod's record, like even if there are discrepancies with the timing. It was insane. Like I genuinely didn't see how it was possible and like how they were going for so long. Uh, and one guy was driving a car while not blinking. So yeah, it was a great task that one. I'm glad that one was carried over because it was just ridiculous how how long they kept their eyes open for. Uh, but yeah, I'm a bit unsure about how correct the timings are. But yeah, it was still a great task to watch. So some of the original tasks include make a waffle uh, without being in the red green. So we had long distance waffle making, which I absolutely loved. Uh, another one that I really liked was they had to make two like babies laugh at the same time. Uh, yeah, the birthday uh, like party food one. I really liked that one as well. Uh, making shoes for the taskmaster. Again, Maria making um, shoes out of food, uh, which yeah, just went right into like her approach to a task. One thing I love about the way the tasks are done in this show is that there seems to be a complete lack of regard for health and safety. Um, yeah, just completely, they, the contestants have full access to like chainsaws, grappling hooks, knives, hammers, without any safety equipment. Like there's no way they'd be able to do that in the UK one. So there was one task where they had to move, and they had to unravel a string as like as far as possible. And one guy tied it to his car and drove out while the string was attached uh, to something in the house. So he was driving with a long piece of string in the road where like people, cars would have been turning and stuff. How is that allowed? Because <laughs> a taskmaster house in the Norway, uh, Norway one seems to be like in the middle of a town. Yeah, I just don't know how that was allowed. Uh, there's, yeah, there's lots of things. Oh, fire, they, they um, with that string task as well, somebody put it in a cement mixer and chucked so much like oil and uh, gasoline on it and lit it alight and it was just fire coming out of the cement mixer. Yeah, just very little health and safety. I think I saw them more like goggles once. Whereas, yeah, when they were using a, a slingshot in the UK one, they had to put goggles on. Uh, whereas this, it's like they're allowed to chain, <laughs> just allowed to pick up chainsaws. But yeah, it was very funny to watch, but I am scared for their lives. At one point as well, where a tower uh, started falling on Ollie and he had to like quickly get out of the way. So let's get on to more specifics. So the prize task. The prize tasks were actually very, very good. I would say very strong, a lot stronger than the UK ones, at least at the moment. Um, so they, a lot of the contestants bring in prizes that are actually good prizes and fit the category, which if you've watched my live streams, you know that is a thing that I like. I like the prizes to be good and I like them to fit the category. And the categories are very interesting as well. So we've had a couple copied over again. So biggest amount of money, like the most money. Also some really interesting ones as well, like item that's been used to kill something. Uh, the best thing you've baked, which I think is my favorite prize task so far. Like one guy made a, like a beef wellington. And an interesting way they do it is they have all the prizes in the studio covered with like a red cloth. So the contestants like reveal it and they can also like demonstrate it rather than watching like a video of it. Like there's only been a few moments where the contestants actually like handle their prize themselves and like can demonstrate it. So I think it's great that that is an aspect of it. I think it's great to see the contestants themselves actually kind of argue why it's good with the prize with like there. Yeah, and most of the time people put in a good amount of effort. It didn't seem like series 10 of Taskmaster where they were just grabbing the random thing and calling that a day. They did, seems like they thought about it and put effort in most of the time, obviously, sometimes, you know, there's always gonna be parts where it's not as good. Uh, so yeah, I am very thoroughly enjoyed the prize tasks. So the studio tasks, the studio tasks were pretty decent. I would say for me, they were the weakest tasks. I don't know why. Um, 
I just felt sometimes they felt a bit rushed. So there were some good ones. So there was one that was put on a shirt and tie and the shirt and tie were frozen. I thought that was a good trick. And Bard actually ran away to microwave it, uh, which I've never actually seen someone leave the, ta le uh, leave the stage before. So that was very interesting to watch. And yeah, most, I think a thing that does affect me, my opinion of the uh, studio tasks is that most of them are the same as the UK ones. So it's not as interesting to me like they had hold down as many balloons as possible we, like using bread. And sometimes they will stop when the first person has completed a task and then judge everybody else's progress from there, which I don't like because just because you've had a slow start doesn't mean you can't catch up at the end. So I don't really like that way of scoring it. I would prefer to see everybody's attempt, like maybe not the last person. One of the tasks from series 12, the one where they had to put the uh, medal on, that one, if we had stopped when the first person had won, like, how are you supposed to know who would have come second without actually seeing it? Because you never know who would have quickly figured it out and or who would have got stuck on the last stage, you know? So I feel like they should definitely let the tasks run its course, let everybody do it before stopping it. Okay, and on to the team tasks. And interestingly, there was no team tasks in the Norwegian one, which was a weird choice for me. Like, I didn't really miss it when I was watching it, but I feel like it would have been really, really funny to watch them interact. I feel like the, the groupings could have been really cool. We could have put the siblings together, like the brothers. I think that would have been cool to see how they work together, like whether or not it's an advantage or a disadvantage, like whether they would get on really well or maybe like argue and have different approaches. Just because they have just such great chemistry, I think it's a shame that we didn't get to see them all work together. Together. Okay, overall, did I like Taskmaster Norway? Yes, I did. I thought it was really, really good. A very, very strong remake. Um, and a lot of people that I've seen like in the comments of where I've been watching it and also kind of on Reddit and stuff like that, a lot of people do like the Norwegian one. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, then please give it a like. It's really appreciated and great for the channel. And comment down below what you thought of the Norwegian one if you have seen it and what your opinions are of it. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you think it's the best remake or should which one should I watch next if I am going to watch another international version? If you're interested in watching more videos about Taskmaster and other British TV shows or international versions of our TV shows now, uh, then subscribe and I'll have more videos out for you soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.